Hello YouTube and welcome to what is officially our first video in our new workshop. Now today we're going to be installing a night heater. We have done a night heater video before on this channel, but for two reasons we're going to be doing a new one. The first reason is our first one was filmed with poor video quality, poor sound quality, poor editing, and hopefully with a new camera setup, a new workshop, a new lighting, and better acoustics, we're gonna be able to bring you a much better video. The second reason is recently night heaters have been getting some unjustified stick in the news, the press, over Facebook groups, and today hopefully we're gonna show you that most of that stick is unjustified if the night heater is installed correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is unbox the night heater and show you exactly what comes in the box and explain one of the reasons why the night heaters have been getting so much stick in the press just recently. So this is your fuel tank that's obviously going to contain your fuel to run the night heater. This is the mounting plate. We're going to show you how to do something pretty cool with that later to make the night heater much safer. These are the instructions, and this is one of the reasons that night eaters have been getting some stick in the press uh, and withheld at customs. Uh, the reason customs have been withholding the night heaters are not because the night heaters themselves are unsafe, but because these instructions are substandard and do not give you a clear example of how to set up the night heater safely. Because these instructions are written in a factory in China, and probably translated using Google Translate. It doesn't translate very well, and it doesn't give you a clear guide how to safely and correctly set this night heater up. And that is the most dangerous part about the night heater, not the night heater itself. This is your fuel pump. This is your control panel and remote control. This is the night heater itself. This is a true two kilowatt version, uh, and I can, I'll explain a little bit more about that later as to telling the difference between the two kilowatt and the five to eight kilowatt, which is actually a five kilowatt. This is your exhaust pipe and your muffler for the exhaust. These are your air ducting pipes and your vents. This heater does come with the white fuel line, which is the better fuel line to use. If your heater comes with green fuel line, I do recommend changing that out for the white solid fuel line. This is for your combustion air intake that goes underneath the heater. This standpipe is an option to either go in the top here and then this will bend down into your tank to pick up the fuel. We have an assortment of Jubilee clips. These are not official Jubilee clips and I strongly recommend uh, that you replace all of these with official Jubilee clips uh, to get a much stronger grip around the things that you're going to be using. We have a fuel filter. These are your exhaust and combustion air intake clips. This rubber mount is for going around your fuel pump so it can be fastened onto wherever you're going to be fastening it up. A handful of cable ties just for tidying everything up at the end. So in here we have a few 10mm nuts which I'll show you what they do later. These clips are for your fuel line. Again I recommend you change these and we will be doing for the purpose of this video so I can show you that and then some little tech screws, again, for fastening everything up, and you'll see that later on in the video. This last piece of fuel pipe is gonna get chopped up later, but again, you should have another piece of fuel pipe like this, along with your white solid fuel pipe, and finally, your wiring harness. So this is what's gonna connect everything together from your battery to your controller, to the heater, and also to the fuel pump. So before we get on with setting any of that up, the first thing we need to do is using this is cut a 127 millimeter or five inch hole through the van floor. I will explain more in detail as to why we do that later in the video, but first things first, we need to get out to the van and get that hole cut through the floor so we can move on with the next step. So now we're out in the van and the first thing you need to remember is location, location, location. You can't just stick a night heater anywhere. And the reason for this is because to make this as safe as possible, we do need to put this through the floor, which is quite a large hole. Now, if you are just to throw this anywhere, you've got pieces of subframe, 
you've got your chassis there's all sorts of things under the van that you need to avoid some vans have a spare wheel carrier obviously you don't want it coming straight through where that is so what you need to do is really have a good look under your van and a good think about where you're going to be placing cabinets and beds and things where you're going to want to hide it and make sure that you pick the right location this particular van is a Vauxhall Vivaro and the customer is going to be having the bed across the back there they want it placing under the bed now the spare wheel carrier on this van is around here so we're going to try and get it as far forward as we can somewhere before the wheel arch finishes and then the batteries uh, and all the electrics are going to be here boxed in so we're hoping to fit the heater somewhere around here now let's have a look under the van now like i said before this here is the spare wheel carrier so we need to try and stay back beyond that but again we've got this to contend with we do not want to be drilling through this or this so we're going to be aiming to go in this nice open space here so just make sure when you're looking under your van that you're not going to be coming through on anything structural or near anything such as brake lines suspension your exhaust and just have a really good think because preparation is key at this point now a good way to check that you're going to be in the right place is by using a tape measure and a reference point that you can see from both above and below the van so where we're going a good reference point would be the very edge of the back bumper i can measure off the back bumper to the rough area where i want to be and then we can do the same on the top to make sure that we're going to put that first hole through in the right place another good thing you can do is a pilot hole if you use a nice small drill bit and you get yourself roughly where you think you want to drill that hole remember you've then got a five inch radius around that pilot hole should you need to move slightly in any direction so underneath the van i've got 780 millimeters from the back bumper to that first support which i do not want to be hitting so the first thing i'm going to do is measure that out from here so that tells me that support is here and i need to be moving further forward from there you can also if you like measure from there to the next support just to give you a rough idea of exactly what area you can work with just in case you want to fine tune and move it to get it somewhere where it's going to line up so it can be boxed in inside cabinets beds etc so you don't have to have the heater on shore so the start of this drill bit here is exactly where that support is underneath the van so we do not want to be drilling through there or going to be going through that support so what we're going to do now it's come a little bit further forward and then this is about where we want the heater to sit but to be completely sure the first thing we're going to do turn there to make a mark and we're going to put a pilot hole through now leaving that drill bit in we can now go look under the van and make sure we're happy with that position so as you can see from under the van now we are beyond the spare wheel carrier we're well away from any of these supports right in the middle of a nice open section so that's a perfect place to get that hole drilled through if like me you're going to be using a battery drill for that process uh, the key is not to put too much pressure on and let the drill have time to cool down because it is a big hole for a battery drill so now the next step is to measure the depth of your floor so if you've got insulation in there if you've got other things uh, you're going to need to know the depth of that so this is just a ply floor and then the ribs of the floor so what you need to make sure is the floor is going to go up and then it's going to go down so you need a depth measurement at the thickest point so this one is only 22 millimeters so as i explained earlier we're going to be doing something pretty cool with this to make it even safer now this part of the process you're going to need a welder but don't panic if you don't have a welder or any welding experience then you can just go on ebay and get yourself what's called a turret mount so if you type in night heater turret mount lots of different ones will come up and they will have different depths to relate to the depth of what you've just measured for your particular floor but for us what we're going to do is get a piece of five inch steel pipe cut it slightly longer than the depth that we want and then weld it onto this to make our own turret plate so with your turret made or bought it's time to get this 
slotted onto the heater and then we're going to do a top down view so you can see exactly how everything bolts on. Once that's done it's ready to start putting everything in the van. So before we go actually into the installation then I'm just going to quickly show you the difference between the 2 kilowatts and the 5 kilowatt heater and the only difference is, is size and heat output. So this is a 2 kilowatt heater and this is the 5 kilowatt heater. And you can see there is an obvious size difference and the heat output is the only other difference. So I'm going to do a top down view now so you can see exactly what's going on as I'm bolting everything onto the bottom here. So when I refer to the front of the heater, I'm referring to here where you can see the fins of the engine. This is where the heat is going to come out. When I refer to the back of the heater, I'm referring to this where the fan is and this is where it draws the air in to then push it through and give you the heat out the front. So front, fins, back, fan. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do at the front here, you have a hole for your fuel line to come back and down onto the heater itself. So that's just gonna come through there and then we can put the turret onto the heater and start putting it all together. Just make sure you've got enough through to be able to safely come around there and down onto your fuel intake, which is the small nozzle in the middle. Then we can take the four 10 mil nuts that we showed earlier, and these are for actually bolting your turret onto your heater. So next we're going to put the exhaust on. Now the exhaust goes on this part, which is at the front of the heater. This is the standard exhaust that comes with the heater. Uh, this isn't long enough to get this safely to a location on the van. So we're going to be extending this and installing a larger exhaust. Uh, depending where you install your heater, this exhaust may or may not be perfectly ample. To do this, like I said, we're going to be using official Jubilee clips and you can see as to why. There is a huge difference between the cheap, nasty things that they send you in the packaging and a proper official Jubilee clip. These are going to longevity your life. Remember, these are going to be living underneath your van, getting covered in crap all the time when you're driving down the road. A little tip when putting this into here, if you want to put that and work out exactly how far in you want it to go and then put a pen mark on there and then when I push that in I know exactly how far in it's gone So next we're going to be installing the combustion air intake pipe onto the port on the rear of the heater. And then just remember that this exhaust is going to get extremely hot. So I like just for safety's sake to clip this back just to pull your fuel line away from your exhaust. It does kind of flow naturally away from it anyway if you bring it in in this direction and round but I just like to make sure that it's definitely not going to go anywhere near it. final job before we put it into the van is going to be to attach the bracket which is going to hold uh, your exhaust up. So there is a rounded end which slots into here. You'll see. A bit better from there. They don't actually send anything suitable for this. Uh, luckily I have a random assortment of tiny nuts and bolts. They do, what they do send is tech screws. So I don't know if they're expecting you to somehow tech screw it into there but 
they never actually send a bolt. So you're just gonna want a tiny nut and bolt. This is gonna make a safer way of doing it. And a couple of washers. Obviously, if you're unlike me, you don't have a little random box of nuts and bolts. You're gonna to have to nip to a hardware store and get those. Now, you should have something that looks like this, and we're gonna go drop it into the van through the hole that we've drilled in the floor and we can start looking at piping everything up and connecting all the electrics up. So we're gonna drop this into the hole first with this extended exhaust on this does make it slightly more difficult. So what I'm going to do now is draw around this to add sealant, so we can jimmy that back out. Now we're going to add two beads of Sikaflex, one around the perimeter of the line and another around the perimeter of the circle. This is just going to make sure that this is completely sealed and no exhaust gases can get back from under the van into here should these exhaust gaskets leak in the future. Now, as you can see, that is a bit of a tricky process, but your other option is to seal it first and then try and drag all your exhaust and everything past it, which makes even more of a mess. But give it a good push down and make sure that your Sikaflex sealant is squeezing out everywhere. That means it's got a solid fix all the way around and no exhaust gases can get back into your habitation area. Now all that's left to do is screw your turret down to the floor and that is your feet heater fixed in place. Depending on the thickness of your floor and what you're screwing into obviously depends what fixings you're going to use. Again they do send some very small but all but useless tech screws. And always remember to be careful because once you've got that on your finger you can touch anything and everything and you can guarantee whatever you do touch is something that you don't want to get messy i'm gonna go wash my hands so this is the really fun part to film and also for you guys doing it but we're gonna to have to now go under the van and fasten up the exhaust and the combustion air intake so one thing you need to make sure of is that there is at least one meter between your combustion air intake and your exhaust muffler. So I want to make sure that's pinned up right out of the way and then the exhaust is going to go right to the back of the van. So using these clips and a tech screw and an 8mm bit holder that's the air intake done now for the exhaust, I'm just going to show you this before I clip this up because then it puts it sort of behind there and you're not going to really, I can't get the camera in to show you, but basically you want to make sure that there is always a fall. So the lowest point of your exhaust, took this off to show you, needs to be your muffler. And the bottom of your muffler there is a drain hole, so any moisture that collects in the exhaust will always drain down. So make sure you don't have any sag in your exhaust. It needs to fall from the heater and always be going down. And then the lowest point is here, and that means that any moisture that collects inside your exhaust can drain out of that drain hole. So your muffler needs to be fastened horizontally like that. So we've had a little fast forward in time now because we had to get the electrics installed in the van so we could show you the next step. So the wiring harness is fairly self-explanatory because each connector will only fit on the corresponding item that it needs to fit into. So this large block here is gonna go straight on to your heater, like so. This one here 
with the circlip is going to go onto your pump. This one here that is kind of an odd triangle shape is going to go onto your control panel. And then we have a live and a negative wire. The negative needs to go to a ground or to the ground on your battery. And the live again needs to go to your battery, but it also has a inline fuse. Now what I'm gonna do is wire this directly into the van's fuse box, which means I'll remove this fuse from this fuse holder and put it straight into there once we've got that wired up. So this is the final stage now. All we need to do is connect the fuel line up to the tank, then we can put some fuel in it, prime it and test it. So we're going to be using some more of this black pipe now. We need to chop this down into a few more sections so we can connect the pipe into the pump and the filter and then up to the tank. So at first, I just need to choose my pump position. So this needs to be fastened on a 45 degree angle facing away from the heater towards the tank. So once you've connected this on like we did earlier to the heater, just in case of doing the same on this side and connecting up in a series. Two things to make note of here is that your pump connector is aiming towards the heater for the to make sure the direction of the pump is correct and that your fuel filter is screwed top side to your tank. Now if you've got more space than I have, you can put a piece of pipe in here if you want your filter a little bit further away to make it look tidier. But because we've got to keep this so low because there's a bed going up here, I'm just going to go straight in with my flexible pipe and not have a piece in the middle there. So now all we need to do is connect up the fuel pump, which you do by removing that circlip. Just sliding it over the connector on the pump and then replacing the circlip. All we need to do now is tidy up this cable and fuel line and then we can fill the tank, prime it and see if it works. So I tried filming this part earlier on when I actually installed the tank but I gave it up as a bad job because you really couldn't see uh, what I was trying to show you but now that the fuel's in the tank you'll see that the tank is installed on a bit of a slant and you can see that because of the fuel line. The reason for this is this tank came pre-fitted with its fittings on the bottom which means sediment can collect at the bottom of the tank and then work its way and through and into your heater. So what I've done is installed the tank slightly on an angle which means the lowest point of the tank is at the opposite side of the tank than that and that's just going to help if there is any sediment settling help it settle into that corner. So on to priming. Now depending on which motherboard and control panel you get and it's now I'm basically impossible to tell until you get the heater itself. They both look identical, but they're slightly different when you turn them on. So there's two different ways to prime them. One is if you hold OK and down, and then what happens is it'll come up and say off in the corner. You then click the top button and that will change to on and it will continuously prime until you press the button again and switch it back to off. This control panel, you need to hold in both the up and the down arrow keys and keep them pressed down for as long as you want to prime. So you can hear that's now the pump's kicked in. So it's now going to start bringing fuel through. When I want it to stop, I can just release both of those and it'll stop. So an important point when you're priming your heater, and I cannot stress this enough, is to not allow the fuel all the way through and all the way into the heater. If you do this, you're going to over prime the heater and the first time you fire your heater up, it's going to look like the red arrows are parked in your garden dumping all the white smoke. Now, the ideal solution is to have somebody laid under the van and shout you when it's a couple of inches away. If you're doing this on your own like I am now, what I usually do is where it disappears into the floor under the heater, you know you've not got a great deal uh, of pipe left there. So once it disappears into the floor, especially when I'm using this method of 
priming because it ticks for a few seconds afterwards anyway is I'll release that. The worst thing that's going to happen is on the first fire up it's not going to pull enough fuel in and then come up with an error code for under fuel in. Then you can unplug the harness, plug the harness back in, that'll reset it and then fire it up again and it'll usually fire up second time. That doesn't always happen but obviously because you can't see where the fuel's going it's better to stop it too short than it is to send it in and cause white smoke for absolutely ages. So one good prolonged press on there should start up the heater you can see the picture of the fan spinning there and if you listen carefully the heater is just in its first warm-up cycle so now you can hear that the pumps now kicked in so that means it's pumping fuel to the heater and that's that one running heater that's giving out some lovely warm air and then to turn it off all you're going to need to do again a prolonged press on the power button that's going to put it into a cool down mode but whatever you do do not switch any power off to the heater before it's fully cooled down so the last thing to do now will be just to connect up your pipe. Obviously we don't have anything to, to put it through, but usually we connect this on with your Jubilee clip. And then this does stretch out, this will stretch out quite a bit. And then again, Jubilee clip that through, you drill a hole and put that through whatever you're gonna be covering this up with, whatever you're boxing it in with. And then Jubilee clip it on the back. It will just cut with a standing knife. If like this, you're only going a short distance. And then that's it, you're good to go. There you go, diesel heater fitted, nice warm van done. I've tried to make this video as in-depth as possible without dragging it on too much. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. We do have other diesel heater videos in our diesel heater category, including different repair jobs and also getting that pesky little connector in the bottom of your big 10 litre tanks. So you can check that out. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up or even drop us a comment to let us know you're watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And remember, if in doubt, get the Sickerflex out. We'll see you next Tuesday.